Welcome back to geometry. Um, we're going to look at uh, section 1.5 here, which for the first time will introduce the idea of an angle. Okay, now this is a topic you would have looked at back in middle school, but we want to talk about the basics so that we can move forward with the right notation and the right classifications to do it correctly. Okay, so we're going to start off by just kind of looking at what this tool is called. Okay, and actually, so that it's not just on paper, I did go ahead and bring one. Um, this is what's known as a protractor. Okay, now what a protractor allows us to do is efficiently sort of measure the angle measures of any angle, okay? Um, and that's really assuming that we're stopping between zero and 180 degrees, all right? Um, you can have angles much larger than that, but in geometry, our focus is really gonna be 180 degrees and less at any sort of single time, okay? So let's look at kind of what they're doing, and we'll, we'll also talk about what that would mean on this uh, tool as well, okay? You'll notice here, they seem to have lined this point up Okay, and you've, you've got this sort of figure with these rays. We've got OA, we've got o, OB, and it looks like we have something coming off the left here. Um, and essentially what's, what's happening here is they went ahead and lined it up with some central point down here at the base. And by lining the side up with this, uh, this little line here on the protractor, it looks like what they're able to do is set that at a value of zero. Okay, and if you look at my protractor, you'll notice it has the same kind of thing. Okay, I've got this little plus sign here. That's what I would place at O to help guarantee that I'm starting off at a zero value. And if I follow this side length out, you'll notice it points over here to where, you know, we have these markings. And these markings help indicate angle measure. Okay, and this one says either 180 or zero. Well, obviously we haven't measured an angle yet. This is our starting position. So this is kind of our zero. So we kind of zero the first side, okay? We know we're looking at the outer ring of values now, okay? The inner side, we're not counting down as we're, we're increasing this, this angle measure over here to OA, okay? So we're gonna use the outside, all right? And then all we've gotta do is follow that around to the location where this second ray, OA, intersects, okay? And as I follow that around, it looks like it's pointing out here to 40 and 140, and you guessed it, we, we were going on the outer ring, so that would be 140 degrees, okay? This angle here, this one right here, would represent 140 degrees, okay? So it's, it's kind of as simple as that. You just line up a side, and then you can measure kind of how wide your V goes, okay? Um, in, in this case... It's, it's rather, uh, well, relatively large when you consider that this only goes up to 180 degrees in the first place, okay? So let's take a look at some different types of angles now, okay? We've got acute, right, obtuse, and straight, and we've got the classifications right below every one of those. So take a second and read those. That'll really help you guys. Uh, greater than zero and less than 90, that's going to be acute, okay? So that would always be less than this sort of L shape that we could create, right? that sort of L shape I'm referring to. A lot of times we'll put a little box there to indicate that it's a right angle, just like we talked about last cycle with the Pythagorean theorem right relating to the distance formula. We were making these right triangles, weren't we? And there's the right angle, okay? And you know what? We could actually show that right now if I just line this up again. This one goes out to zero, and that one would go straight up to 90 degrees, okay? All right, so that one would measure 90 degrees. Um, we've got our obtuse, okay? Our obtuse... Let's see here, seems to be larger than 90, that's for sure. Um, if this is zero, we follow that around. Maybe that's out here to like 130 degrees, okay? Um, and then finally, a straight angle. Straight angles are the easiest because they always make a straight line, right? And so it points from zero to the other sort of zero, right? Which doesn't really make sense. It's zero to 180, okay? So let's just make sure that we know kind of where we're measuring. Okay, in this case, we were measuring from this base ray on up to the other. In this one, we were measuring around to the second. And just kind of follow that around on the rest of these. Okay? And so that's what made this about 180 degrees. I believe this is about 130. And I'm not sure if I got the measure on this first one. Let's see. Um, looks like maybe 25 degrees. If I were to follow that up, maybe 25 is reasonable. Okay? Maybe 25 there. So not too hard to use, but at the same time, very helpful. And of course, anytime you see this marking, we automatically know that's an angle, right? Okay, so there's really only one other postulate that I want to introduce before you guys try some practice problems, and then we can 
check those uh, well in the in the second video, and I'll, I'll run you through a couple here too. Um, the angle addition postulate is what I'm referring to here. Okay, now this kind of goes back to segment addition, in the sense that it's really helpful to ask yourself how many of these angles are you dealing with in the first place. How many angles do you guys see drawn here? Well, I see the large angle. Okay, I see this big one here. I also see that it's composed of two smaller ones. This one here and the second one down below it, okay? The sort of V-shape down below that, okay? Now, before we go on any further, I want to talk about how we name these, okay? These have some very special names, okay? This point, basically where all the angles are located, is what's known as the vertex of an angle, okay? That is the vertex of an angle. That is the location of the measurement of the angle. All right. Um, now, as for the other two pieces here, for instance, let's say we're looking at SR and ST here, or for that matter, even SP, those are, those are going to be sides, okay? We've got sides of angles. We have vertexes. That's awful, isn't it? Vertices is actually the plural of it. Um, a vertex or vertices of an angle, okay? And then so to name these, we have a couple different options, okay? Either I can sometimes name them by the vertex, in this case it would be angle S, or I could name it, say in this case, angle RST. RST. Now, I wanted to introduce both topics, and I realized everybody's like, oh yeah, this is so much easier. Okay? I can just name it by my vertex. And you know what? I'd love it if you could. You can't always. And actually, this is one of those cases where I can't. Here there are a total of three of these V-shaped figures all located where? Well, at our vertex at S. So if I said angle S, it's that same naming issue we came across in the first lesson, where if you don't know which one you're talking about, it must not be enough, okay? So angle S in this case is just not going to cut it. So this angle RST, well, what do you notice? The vertex is always in the middle, okay? And the sides, some points on the sides, are always going to go first and last. Okay? That's kind of our naming scheme. So let's think about this for a second. How would I name the top angle? Just this top one. Once again, I can't just call that angle S as much as I'd like to. There are too many angles at this location. If I just had one here, that'd be, that'd be easy. But I don't. So instead, I can call that either angle RSP. Okay, this one would be angle RSP. Your vertex is in the middle. R and P are on the sides, aren't they? That's one side, there's the other side. Or you could actually flip P and R. Since they're both sides, it doesn't matter which side you, lift, you list first. But what has to stay in the middle? That vertex. So in this case, angle P, S, R. Okay? Now, some of you may look at this and go, oh, that's a, that's a middle school concept. I've known that for years. That's great. That really is, okay? I know a lot of people really struggle with naming. And so if we can get that down early on, it's going to help us the rest of the year uh, here in geometry, okay? So we got our naming down. Like I said, that would be an example. Take a second and ask yourself if you could name the bottom angle then, okay? Pause the video. See if you could name that on your own. And I'll just go ahead and say those answers now, okay? That would be either angle PST or angle TSP. The vertex stays in the middle. P and T are the sides. You can flip those in either order, okay? All right, so you may want to add some notes there, okay? Obviously, I was adding a lot to the side. You may want to talk about, like, how they're named, and that way you can reference back to this later on, okay? So these are our basic notes here for the day. Um, in the second section... Um, I would I really like you guys to pause this and uh, see if you can work through all those and figure them out. And let me just point out once again, what do you notice about every middle letter? Oh, 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 oh. Well, go figure. All the angles in this diagram are located at point O, okay? That's where all the points of every V is located, right? So there you have it. All the others are indicating the sides you're looking at. So AOB, angle AOB, we're talking about just this V here. Okay, just this angle here. So I would start at zero degrees. Okay, there's my zero, and I work my way up to it looks like 35. So that's going to be listed as 35 degrees. Find the degree measure of each of the following angles. There we have it. Now, now we're going to classify each as acute, right, or obtuse. Well, is this uh, between zero and 90? Yeah. 
So that means this is acute, okay? So again, if you haven't already, pause the video, try the rest on your own, okay? All right, next up, <clears throat> angle AOC, AOC. So ignore this side now. We're going a little bit further up, aren't we? So we go from zero up to, looks like that's 65, right? It's between 60 and 70, so 65 degrees. And again, that's going to be acute. It's between zero and 90. Angle BOC. Now this is a little bit tricky. BOC, because BO, let me rephrase that, OB, that's actually the ray, isn't it? Um, starts at 35 degrees. OC goes up here to 65 degrees, okay? So what's the difference? If this is at 65, this one's at 35, let's see. Well, that leaves us with 30 degrees remaining, right? So that is a 30 degree angle, which again makes it acute, acute, okay? B-O-E, B-O-E. Now be really careful. If I'm going to say that this is 35 degrees here at OB, I need to continue using the inner measurement, okay? So this one on the inside measurement is going to be at 145 degrees, okay? So 145 minus 35, I'm left with 110 degrees, okay? 110 degrees would represent, well, let's see here, it's more than 90, right? So it's not acute, it's not right, it's actually obtuse. Next up, COE, C-O-E. Well, let's see here, OC is at 65 degrees, it appears to be, on the inner ring of numbers, and that's at 145 degrees. So 145 minus 65 leaves me at 80 degrees. Because that's less than 90, we're going to list this as acute. Okay? It's acute. Next up, angle COD. Well, COD, let's see here. OC is at 65. OD is over here at 110. 110 minus 65 is going to leave me with, let's see, oh, let's see. Uh, that should end up giving me 45 degrees. Okay? 45 degrees, which makes this acute. All right. Next up, BOD. BOD. So OB is at 35 degrees. OD on the inner ring is at 110 degrees. Let's subtract that. 110 minus 35 is going to leave us with 75 degrees, which means this is also acute. Tons of these acute angles, right? And finally, AOE. AOE. That's a pretty big angle. So OA starts at zero, OE goes all the way around to 145, and there you have it. That's more than 90 degrees, making this obtuse. Okay. So hopefully that went pretty well for you. Uh, I didn't happen to have any straight angles or any right angles. Straight angles, keep in mind, would make a total of 180. They end up looking like a straight line, hence the name. And right angles, of course, are going to give you that nice, perfect L shape. Not looks like it. I'm talking exactly 90 degrees. Okay. All right. Next up are some practice problems. And again, I would recommend trying these on your own before I go over any of them. Okay. Give them a shot. Um, I will actually just pick one from each section if you're having trouble. And finally, I'll finish out by doing all nine. Okay. So you can just kind of follow along as needed. I guess I won't need a second video. Okay. All right. So in exercises one through three, name three different angles in the diagram. Okay. Well, again, I know a lot of people see this and they just see kind of you know, maybe two angles, the top one and the bottom one, but together they actually make a larger one, right? So let's name those, okay? The small one may be on top. Let's go ahead and, I mean, just to keep track of them, we got a small, kind of a medium, and then when you combine them, we get a large, right? So the small is the one up top. That would be angle EFG, angle EFG, okay? And of course, you could have flipped that. You could have called it angle GFE, so long as the vertex, that's the point, where all these V's are, so long as that is right here in the middle, okay? Next up, my medium one is GFH, or I could reverse that HFG, okay? Angle GFH. And finally, a large one here, that's going to be the two combined, so angle EFH. And there we have it, okay? All right, like I said, try two and three. I'll show you those later on. We're going to jump down to four through nine here. Finding the indicated measure. Okay, let's go ahead and try this on, say, number five. All right? Now, 
that tells us angle RSU. Now let's follow this. R to S to U. That's everything here, isn't it? Um, this is a side, and this is a side. Those are the ones we're focusing on. So together, this is how we're going to show this. All of this is 91 degrees. Kind of like how with segments, we talked about like combining segments. Angle addition, what you guys saw on the front page, works the exact same way. Okay, We've got 91 degrees total. That one's 69 degrees. So if I want to figure out what's left, this angle RST, it's got to be some portion of 91. Well, let's take away the 69 and see what's left. 91 minus 69 is going to be 22 degrees. So there we go. The measure of angle RST is equal to 22 degrees. Not too bad, right? All right, and then one more here before you guys should definitely try the, the last six on your own. Um, let's go ahead and try number seven. Find the measure of angle CAD. So we're looking for just kind of this top small angle, right? Not the medium one and certainly not the big one where they're both combined. So I'm looking for that one. And then, then we're going to look for BAD, which is the medium one, okay? Now this is really important. Whenever you guys see these, these geometric figures, this notation, you need to keep track of it. What that means is that where it touches the sides of the angle, which would be AC and AB, together, everything between those sides is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of that. This has got to give us 90 degrees total. So what that means is that this, this piece and this piece together using angle addition add up to 90. So that says x minus 15, and we'll add in our 5x plus 57. Okay, together that is 90 degrees. Now let's combine some like terms. x and 5x gives me 6x. 57 minus 15 is going to leave me to 42, and all that equals 90. So let's move my numerical terms to the opposite side. We'll subtract 42. 6x is equal to 48. And then we'll divide by 6. x is equal to, you guessed it, 8. So if x is 8, are we done? Unfortunately not. That's not what we were told to find. Always read directions. But what I can do is I can plug it in. So I get x minus 15. That's going to be 8 minus 15. Yep, 8 minus 15 is going to be a negative 7. Okay, so looks like we made a mistake somewhere along the way because we can't have negative angle measurement, okay? From what I can tell, this is probably supposed to be a plus, okay? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to correct this. That's my fault, guys. Sorry about that. So x plus 15 plus 15. 57 plus 15 is going to end up giving us, looks like 72. 72, okay? And so when I subtract that across, I get 18, and finally divide by 6 to get x is equal to 3. So let's try this now. Let's try this, okay? Like I said, sometimes you, you're going to get these values that don't make sense, okay? It was likely just a sign issue. We just couldn't tell what sign that was, okay? So let's try it. 3 plus 15 it's going to be 18 degrees, so angle CAD, the measure of angle CAD is 18 degrees, okay? Now there are two ways to find this one. First of all, you know that together, these are what we call complementary angles, angles that add up to 90 degrees, okay? So I could just take 90 and subtract the amount I know, subtract 18, or I could of course take 3 and plug it in. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 57 is going to leave us with 72. Okay, So the measure of angle BAD, in either case, no matter how you did it, is going to be 72 degrees. Okay, And together, yep, you got it. That's 90. Okay, like I said, I'm going to give you those three. No matter what, pause the video now if you haven't already done the other six and go ahead and work through those. Okay, We're going to go back through, and this time around, I'm going to make these much faster now that you guys have kind of seen them, okay? You can, uh, you can check later on. So number two, I'm going to name three of these angles. They would be angle, uh, this is what I get for Russian, uh, QRT, angle TRS, and finally those together would be angle QRS. 
Okay, those are my three angles. All of them have R in the middle because that's the vertex. Any angle I were to pick there, all the V's, the point of the V is always right there at R. Same is true over here for M. M is automatically the vertex. So as long as that's in the middle, we should be okay. LMN, we've got NMK, and finally, we've got the two combined LMK. There are three, okay? Next up, number four, find the measure of angle JKL. Well, J, K, L would be the combination of both of those, wouldn't it? KJ is one side and KL is the other, okay? So if I add these up, 31 and 85 degrees, and they are degree measures, okay? Then I'm going to get their sum, right? Which is going to come out to the measure of angle JKL comes out to 116 degrees, okay? Number six, angle UWX. UWX is a straight angle. And that's so important because straight, straight angle will always give you total of 180 degrees, no matter what. Just like we saw here earlier, right? We got zero up and around to 180, okay? On our protractor there. So um, x plus 20 and x have to add up to be this larger angle. x plus 20 plus x equals 180. I get 2x plus 20 equal 180. When I subtract 20, I get 2x is equal to 160 and divide to get x is equal to 80. Now, unfortunately, I'm not done yet, but this is very helpful, okay? If x is 80, find the measure of angle uwv, and then we'll find the measure of angle xwv. So uwv, pardon that, uwv is going to be 80 plus 20, or 100 degrees. And next up, we've got xwv, xwv, which is just x or just 80. All right, together we have our 180. Next up, numbers eight and nine, e.g. bisects an angle. Just like you can bisect segments, you can bisect angles, okay? Now, let's look at this, <clears throat> pardon me, let's look at this very carefully. You'll notice that this is a single arc, and this is marked with a 92 degree angle, okay? Meaning both of these pieces together are 92. Well, what we can do to indicate that these are the same is actually use those same markings you guys saw before, a little notch on each. So if together it's 92, that would indicate that each one of those is 46 degrees, or 92 divided by 2, right? So find the measure of D, E, G. The top one has to be 46, and G, E, F. Well, the bottom one, this one down here, has to be 46. Let's just write those out. D, E, G. F, 46 degrees each. There we have it, okay? Next up, number nine. We've got QR, ray. I know that may be hard to see, but that is ray QR. It bisects angle PQS. So once again, if it bisects it, if this is bisecting this big angle, that would indicate that the left piece and the right piece have to be the same. So this is another way of showing that angles are the same. You'll notice I didn't actually use a single arc to represent both of them combined, did I? I used one arc here and one arc there. And if I see the same type of arc measurement there, one arc and one arc, then that means those have to be the same, okay? So what we'd have here is that 4x minus 10, the left angle, and negative 3x plus 130, the right angle, have to be equal, okay? So let's go ahead and sum the x's to one side, the numbers to the other, and we're good to go. Let's add that 3x. We get 7x minus 10 is equal to 130. I'll add my 10 across to get 7x is equal to 140. And finally divide to get x is equal to 20. Well, if x is 20, what are my angles? The measure of angle PQR, PQR is here. 4 times 20 is 80, 80 minus 10 would be 70 degrees. And if that's 70, what would PQS, the whole thing, have to be? And that's Hey, I'm glad we, we read that. I was just about to put 70, and some of you were probably thinking the same thing. Um, if this is 70, this is 70, and together PQS would have to be 140 degrees. Okay. 
Now guys, keep in mind, even as I do those quickly, I really am trying to show you guys every little step of every little process, okay? Um, it's not required, okay? I would expect some work here, but if you're, you know, if you're not marking all this stuff, that's totally fine. That's totally normal. I'm just trying to be really clear in these videos to help you guys out, okay? Now, you guys can start it on your homework, and obviously let me know if you have any questions, all right? Good luck.